Mental health disorders can impact an individual's daily life. Today, we will be talking about the ADHD brain. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is a commonly misunderstood mental health condition and one that we will be discussing today. ADHD is recognized in the DSM Manual for Mental Health Conditions. It is characterized as a neurodevelopmental disorder that affects the executive functioning of the brain. Research suggests that genetics could play a role in contributing to ADHD, with statistics saying that 75% of children with ADHD have a relative with the disorder. There are two types of ADHD, inattentive, also called attention deficit disorder, and hyperactive, or ADHD. Depending on the type, the symptoms can differ. Individuals who have the inattentive type of ADHD can experience symptoms such as not paying close attention to details or making careless mistakes, trouble focusing on tasks or conversations, distraction while listening, not following instructions, and not completing tasks. Individuals who have the hyperactive or impulsive type of ADHD can experience symptoms such as fidgeting, tapping hands or feet, not being able to stay seated, and talking too much. These symptoms present themselves equally in males and females, and ADHD is not a sex-specific disorder. However, females are underdiagnosed and males are overdiagnosed with ADHD. In fact, clinic-based studies by the CDC have reported a male-to-female ratio of about 2 to 1 in ADHD diagnoses, specifically in children that are aged 5 to 17 years old. You have perhaps heard that ADHD is a male disorder, this is definitely a myth. There is a notion that hyperactivity is a male characteristic, and as a result, males are often overdiagnosed. Females are misdiagnosed with emotionally based psychiatric illnesses such as anxiety and mood disorders. As of right now, diagnosis of ADHD occurs through a comprehensive evaluation by a clinician who could be a pediatrician, psychologist, or a psychiatrist. There are two routes of treatment for ADHD. The first route is medication. The two medications used to treat ADHD are methylphenidate and amphetamine. Both medications target the prefrontal cortex of the brain, which is responsible for executive functions. Hormones like dopamine and norepinephrine travel across the neuron through the synaptic cleft. The longer a hormone stays in the synaptic cleft, the longer its effects are. Dopamine helps with concentration. Under normal conditions, dopamine stays in the synaptic cleft for long enough to allow a person to concentrate. However, in individuals with ADHD, Hormones like dopamine don't stay in the synaptic cleft for a long period of time, making it hard for them to concentrate. Methylphenidate and amphetamine work by inhibiting the reuptake of these hormones from the synaptic cleft by blocking their receptors so that they can stay there for longer, thereby helping with ADHD symptoms, specifically attention and thinking. Recent research, like the one conducted by Hodgkins and colleagues in 2012, concluded that both medications are equally as effective as each other and they are prescribed on an individual basis. In addition to medication, psychotherapy is considered to be another route for treatment. Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, and behavioral therapy are two areas of psychotherapy that can help improve behavior, self-control, and self-esteem in ADHD patients. Psychotherapy sessions focus on three core areas, including organization and planning, distractibility, and cognitive restructuring. Recent research is looking at how video games could help with ADHD symptoms in children. A proof of concept study was conducted by Davis and colleagues at the Duke University School of Medicine. A video game called Project Evo was developed with high quality graphics and reward loops designed to be engaging for children and to address the underlying areas of neurocognitive functioning that are impacted in ADHD. The results showed that 84% of treatment sessions were completed and that the intervention was appealing and well accepted. Significant improvements were found in the computerized attention task for the ADHD group and highly ADHD impaired severity subgroup. Improvements were also found in spatial working memory for the ADHD group and the highly impaired ADHD high severity subgroup, while there was no change for the non-ADHD group. The findings from this study hold promise that this treatment could help children with ADHD, and it is currently under review by the FDA. 
Several resources also exist to help those experiencing symptoms of ADHD. McMaster University has resources like the Student Accessibility Services, or SAS, and ADHD focus groups that individuals can participate in. Other general resources are children and adults with a Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, Attitude, Totally ADD, How to ADHD, and the National Resource Center on ADHD, which also operates a call center that has trained staff to answer questions about ADHD. Everyone should educate themselves about mental health conditions like ADHD and avoid believing common myths. We hope this video clarified what ADHD really is and the struggles that somebody has going through it. Thank you for watching.